Hi guys, we're going to continue today talking about solving trig equations, but now we're going to work in some factoring. So we're going to jump right in with the first example here. Um, and here I'm trying to solve when 2 tan theta times sine theta minus 10 tan theta is equal to 0 on the interval between 0 and 360 degrees. So I'm looking for um, a degree value solution. Uh, so I'm just going to point out that this is really the product of three separate terms in this first expression, and then I'm combining that with another term, we can treat this the same way we treated algebraic variables, thinking of like tan x as like a, or tan theta as a value x, and sine theta as a value y. And when we have common terms across um, an expression, we can typically factor, uh, in this case, we have a common factor of tan theta. So tan theta is like a variable in and of itself, and we can factor that term out. In fact, there's also a common 2 between the 2 and the 10. So I could factor a greatest common factor of 2 times tan of theta out of this expression. When I do that, what I'd be left with is a factor of sine theta minus. And if I factor out a 2, I'd have a 5. And if I factored that tan theta out, um, I wouldn't have any terms left. And we can double check this factorization by redistributing that tan theta into this expression, and I would in fact wind up with 2 tan theta sine theta, and then 2 tan theta times negative 5 would give me negative 10 tan theta. So successfully factored. Uh, from here, we can use the zero product property. Whenever I have a product of terms equaling zero, one of those terms must in fact be zero itself. So when the first term is zero, that would happen really whenever tan theta itself was equal to zero. And in the second expression, um, the second factor here would be zero whenever sine theta is equal to five, because then that difference would be zero. Uh, now, if you remember the range for sine uh, is only the values from negative one to one. We talked about that in a previous video. So there's never a value of theta that I could plug in for sine to get as large as five. So there's actually going to be no value I could plug in for theta to make that equation true, so there's no solution from this component. However, in the second uh, side, where tan theta is equal to zero, we can solve that by really considering the unit circle. So on a unit circle, which has a radius of one um, and coordinates x and y, uh, we remember that the definition for tan theta on this unit circle is that tangent is the ratio of y over x, so the values that will make tangent zero are really the values where the y-coordinate is zero. And that happens in two places. So that happens over here at the coordinate one zero and over here at the coordinate negative one zero. And the angle values of those positions are zero degrees and 180 degrees. So the two solutions I'm gonna get out of this expression are zero degrees and 180 degrees. Okay. And we were able to get that basically just by going through a factoring process, and after we've factored it out, it becomes two basic trig equations. Okay. So this can get a little bit more involved if instead of just a common factor, we're talking about factoring a quadratic expression. In this case, uh, to help you visualize this, if you think of uh, really y is equal to cosecant squared theta, we call this a variable substitution, by the way. So if I let y, just some variable I invented, equal cosecant, actually, I'm just going to let it be cosecant theta. This expression we're looking at here is really y squared minus 3y plus 2 equals 0, which is similar to any quadratic equation that we've solved before. Okay, So we could go through that by factoring. And typically, when we factor this, um, I can uh, look for what has a sum of negative three and a product of two. So the two numbers that will do that for me are negative one and negative two. So I'd have y minus one and y minus two equaling zero. So that same pattern that we could exploit in a quadratic equation, we can do here, just instead of a y, I have a cosecant. So it's the same process that we used with this blue example over here with that variable substitution, I'm looking for what adds to negative three and multiplies to two, that's still gonna be negative one and negative two. Uh, only instead of a y, we have really a term in terms of cosecant. So that would be cosecant theta rather than that y variable. Uh, again, now that's once we have a product, we can use the zero product property. So either cosecant theta is equal to one or cosecant theta 
is equal to two. Now for me, we've talked about when we solved basic ones with the reciprocals, I don't know the reciprocal uh, functions values offhand that well. So I always like to just convert these using reciprocal. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So if cosecant is two, the reciprocal of two would be one half. And similarly, I could do the same thing with one, but one is convenient in that it's its own reciprocal. And so now I know what the values of sine are. I need to find those angle values, the values for theta in degrees on the interval zero to 360. I'm gonna do that by using our reference angle process. Um, and considering in which quadrants sine here, it is a positive number. And I know that sine is positive in the first two quadrants. Uh, the reference angle that would give me one half based off of that, uh, those special right triangles or the trig chart, however you remember it, would be 30 degrees in this case. So that would give me 30 degrees in quadrant one and 150 degrees in quadrant two. To remember how to come up with these processes, you can go back to our previous video on solving basic trig equations, and I'll walk you through that. Uh, right now I'm focusing on the factoring part. Uh, for sine theta equals one, that's actually not one of our three special angles, but we can infer that value from the unit circle. Since sine is the y value on the unit circle, um, the place where I would get one would be the uppermost coordinate, zero, one, and sine again is that y coordinate on the unit circle. So that's gonna happen at 90 degrees. So the solutions to this problem wind up being 30 degrees, Looks like a six, 30 degrees, 90 degrees, and 150 degrees. Okay, so that's my solution set. Uh, the last thing I wanna mention in this video is one problem that I commonly see with, uh, that students run into. And it's if you go through solving a, a, a trig equation by factoring um, and you're missing a solution, this is possibly one of the things that might have happened to you. You might have accidentally divided by zero somewhere along the problem. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewrite this question over here, and I'm going to make that mistake intentionally, and then I'm going to go back and do it correctly on this side. So say I have cotangent of x times cosine squared x is equal to 2 cotangent of x. And what I'm going to do is divide both sides by cotangent of x. And this is where my problem is going to come in. So if I do that, I get cancellation here and I get a cancellation here and I wind up with cosine squared x equals two. And I could continue going along, but this is where that problem is going to come in um, because cotangent of x could actually be zero in this, in this case. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually potentially dividing by zero, which we know is mathematically invalid. Um, to see that I could be dividing by zero, if I just eyeball the equation, if cotangent were zero, the left-hand side would become zero and the right-hand side would become zero. So I know cotangent equaling zero is one potential solution. So by dividing both sides by that, I'm ignoring that as a potential solution. So you wanna avoid dividing by zero. So then what would you do to do this correctly uh, well, you could separate it out by cases, consider where cotangent is zero is one case, and then go through where it's not. Um, but I like a more kind of deductive process. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, subtract two cotangent from both sides. So I wind up with a new expression, cotangent x times cosine squared x minus two cotangent of x is equal to zero. I'm just going to draw a line here so I don't confuse it with my other expression. Um, rewriting it this way, now I can go through solving basically just common factor of cotangent I could take out, just like we did with our first example in this video. And I wind up with cosine squared x minus two equaling zero. From here we can use the zero product property, but you'll notice that now I have captured that possibility for cotangent to be zero. And when I go through and solve that, I wind up with, well, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so it's going to be zero at 90 and 270. Since we're solving in radians here, I'll write that in their radian uh, form. So pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Uh, and then on the other side of this solution, I wind up with cosine squared x equals 2, which would have been the other value I would have obtained by doing it this way. Uh, if I take roots of both sides, I'll get plus or minus rad two on the right-hand side. So I have cosine x is equal to plus or minus 
the square root of 2. But again, that's a problem because just like with sine, the range for cosine is values from negative 1 to 1. So because the square root of 2 is larger than 1, I'll get no solution from this component. So I wind up with just these two answers, the ones I have gotten from the cotangent being 0. So my solution set for this problem is pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay, so this video was part one in a series of solving trig equations by factoring. In part two, we're going to look at some advanced uh, factoring techniques, which is uh, factoring by grouping, using AC method, or transforming an equation by multiplying it um, by a trigonometric term. So stay tuned for that.